talked quite a bit about speculators and private equity firms snatching up residential real estate and turning them into rentals. Well, unfortunately, Coke Industries is now involved in that. In fact, Charles Coke has decided to double down on the real estate end of his investments. And they're not only snatching up properties, they're also turning them into rentals and fighting tooth and nail to end the eviction moratorium. Because you know, if people can't pay the rent as a result of the pandemic, as a result of these layoffs, well, they're gonna need to be pushed out of their housing. So first, let me give you the details on just how much money Charles Koch is spending right now on buying up real estate, specifically residential real estate, and then turning them into rentals. A month into the pandemic, Koch Real Estate Investments made a $200 million preferred equity investment in Amherst Holdings LLC's single family rental business. And that's according to the corporate law firm Jones Day, which said it advised Koch Industries subsidiary on the deal. Now Amherst says that since 2012, its affiliated funds have acquired and operated more than 30,000 homes. So uh, there's more, that, that it doesn't stop there. In fact, starting last May, Coke Real Estate Investments began a financial relationship with Ladder Capital Corporation, culminating in a 32 million equity investment, 32 million dollar, of course, equity investment in December. And Coke also uh, is making a point to buy up uh, some of the more struggling properties, uh, maybe a development that uh, went bankrupt and was unfinished. One example of that is a Las Vegas pop property that he spent $350 million on. The Las Vegas property that Coke acquired last month for $350 million is one of the oldest and biggest unfinished real estate developments in the country. Property developer Jeffrey Sofer started building the 63 story, almost 4,000 unit hotel slash condominium and casino tower in 2007. But the project filed for bankruptcy after the 2008 financial crisis. So in swoops, like swoops in Charles Koch, he buys up these properties, turns um, you know, properties that ordinary Americans can buy if they're looking to buy their first home, for instance, turns them into rentals, serves as a landlord, uh, much like these private equity firms. This is a little different though from the private equity firms in that Coke is not over leveraged. Private equity firms will borrow money in order to do these investments. But Charles Koch, he's flushed with cash. So he's able to do these investments. And then what does he also need to do to ensure that he gets a return on those investments? He's got to be able to treat these renters like absolute crap and evict them the second they're unable to pay their rent. That means fighting the CDC's moratorium on evictions. He has spent quite a bit of money on that and it is working. I'll give you the details in just a minute, but Jake, first you. Yeah, so I actually want to get to that part because I get it. They bought a lot of homes, they bought a lot of properties. If you think that the market is low, you buy them. We we explained in previous shows that they're squeezing average homeowners out and that that's a significant problem in the in the housing industry. But in this particular story, what I'm more concerned about is they then go and give money to these groups that use the court system with very you know benign sounding names, pretending to speak out for civil liberties, but in reality is funded by Charles Koch. And they use the American government to basically get around the rules of the American government. So they, they use the courts, if, you, if they, you can't buy the legislators to do what you want, then you go and try to influence the courts. So they're gonna spend tons of money trying to make sure that they throw you out of those homes, your homes, so that Charles Koch can make even more money. Exactly, so um, I'll give you a few examples of how they've spent this money and the organizations they've worked with, right wing organizations to essentially uh, go against the moratorium. So in the past few months, for instance, the Texas Public Policy Foundation, the Pacific Legal Foundation, I mean, you, you get the hint with all the cutesy sounding names, the Pacific Legal Foundation and the New Civil Rights Alliance. Get out of here. It's insane, have been pushing federal courts to strike down the CDC 
eviction moratorium, which is designed to protect millions of Americans from being thrown out of their homes during the pandemic. So how much money has Charles Koch spent on this lobbying effort? Between 2017 and 2019 alone, the Charles Koch Foundation contributed almost $7.7 million to those three conservative organizations. And guess what, their efforts have paid off because these are the three organizations that are fighting on behalf of Charles Koch to get people evicted from these properties. In February, the Texas Policy, I'm sorry, the Texas Public Policy Foundation convinced a federal judge in Texas to declare the CDC's eviction moratorium unconstitutional. In March, a federal judge in Ohio sided with the Pacific Legal Foundation, ruling that the CDC, quote, exceeded the scope of its authority, end quote, with its eviction ban. It works, this is how it works folks, it's money in politics, corruption. I mean, the United States loves to criticize other countries that we're thinking about invading or thinking about doing regime change in for corruption. Look at Venezuela, corruption. There's corruption in all these countries that we want to invade. There's corruption in all these countries that we want regime change in. What about the corruption here at home? I mean, we've legalized it. And so I guess they think that it's different because we've legalized bribery, we've legalized corruption. But this system specifically screws you over. Doesn't matter how hard you work, doesn't matter if you do everything right. If you are harmed as a result of a pandemic that you have no control over and you lose your job as a result, oh, Charles Koch will make sure that if you're living in one of his properties, he can evict you. And he'll spend millions of dollars to ensure he can do it. So Lewis Paul Powell wrote a memo in 1971 for the Chamber of Commerce that basically said corporations should get together and take over the government. And one of the things that he thought they should take over was the legislative system and the other was the courts. So if you bribe the politicians in the first place, then they'll just pass whatever bills you want. Well, that turned out to be startlingly true. The bribes are now called campaign contributions. But if that doesn't work, you could just use the court system and in fact, Nixon then put him on the Supreme Court and and Lewis Powell declared that corporations could give money to politicians, which allows them to bribe the legislators in the first place. But if all of that fails, then you go spend money to go back into the courts and sue, sue, sue with all your resources until you convince a judge in Texas that in fact, people should be thrown out of their homes no matter what, right? And so yeah. now if you think about the $7.7 million he put into those legal organizations, that sounds like a lot of money. It isn't if you have hundreds of millions of dollars on the line or if you have billions of dollars on the line, then it's a very small investment to make more money on the back end through the evictions. Because what happens, you evict people, then you put in new renters at a higher price because mm -hmm. now the values have gone up. And then you make way more money out of that person's misery. Now legally, they had a right to stay in that home. The government, the US government passed the law saying they have a right to stay in their home. Charles Koch thought that law was inconvenient. So he's now spending money to buy more of our government so that he can profit further off of it. Our system here in America is sick. It is just totally taken over by corporate machines, including Koch Industries. And, and, and there's no hope in sight. There is no one fighting against it. People give generic lip service to money in politics. No one in Congress ever fights it. And uh, no one's got a proposal, no one's got anything. So uh, God help you if you're powerless in this country, because some giant business owner like Charles Koch will come and pating ruin your life without a second thought so he could make just a little bit more money. They, he made $37 billion just during the pandemic. $37 billion added onto his already incredible wealth. What the hell is he gonna do with all that money? You can't spend it all. It's doing it for his ego. I'm going to be even more rich than the other rich people. Yeah, I mean, our government's supposed to stop people like this and look out for the citizens. Instead, our government is completely captured by corporate interests. Yeah, I mean, while Americans are trying to figure out how they're gonna survive and how they're gonna stay in their homes, this is what wealthy people are up to. Um, they're engaging in a genitalia measuring contest. That's what Charles Koch is more concerned about. Rather than just being a decent human being and avoiding pushing people out of the homes that they're living in for shelter during a pandemic. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. 
you've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.